Why Veganism Won't Save the Planet by Illuminati, aka Blair. She's turned off comments on all of her videos. Can't imagine why. But the videos themselves are still up, including this one on diet and climate change. She starts with this truly inspiring spiel. Our planet is dying and there's not much we can do about it. We're nearing a point of no return. And while I don't want to sound all doom and gloom over here, it's really just not looking great. That's not how climate works. Every bit of additional warming makes things worse, makes them worse faster, makes it harder to adapt to, harder to fix and recover from. But every contribution to slowing and blunting that warming makes things better, saves lives, both human and non-human. This is actually amazing timing considering Hannah Ritchie's book, Not the End of the World, just came out today and it is about exactly this. It is against the cynical doomsday view of climate change. We're all going to die. What's the point? Obviously, I haven't read it yet. It just came out today. But knowing Hannah Ritchie's work with Our World in Data, I'm pretty confident it's going to be great. I can't wait to read it. Anyway, back to Blair. Her first segment in the video is not on animal agriculture and the environment, but monocropping. Thanks to developments in the 1950s and 60s, chemical fertilizers and pesticides became more common. Now you can use chemicals to put the nutrients back into the earth and keep bugs away. As unfortunately, insects are a natural part of monocropping and just plant life in general. Well, this is except for the part where the green revolution didn't exactly do what it promised. See, the idea here was that hunger would go down, double the crops, double the food. However, over time, the consequences of this have actually become quite dire. Now, rice, maize, corn, and wheat contribute to more than 50% of the human diet. These crops are common because they have good yield, wheat and rice primarily as food for humans, corn and soy primarily as animal feed. And there's no doubt this insane improvement in yield has saved millions and millions of lives. Criticisms of modern agriculture are very similar to criticisms of vaccinations. It's really hard for us to care about bad things that didn't happen. It's hard to care about the millions of lives that were not lost. Since people in the developed world don't remember these diseases, they haven't experienced these diseases, it's harder to fear them. And since we don't really know hunger either, it's harder to appreciate modern agriculture. World hunger is still a thing. And even if someone isn't starving, they may not have any diversity in their diet, leading to malnutrition and sickness. The Lancet wrote in 2019 that the current food systems have led to an increased risk in heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and diet-related obesity, all of which pose a greater risk to morbidity than unsafe sex, alcohol, drugs, and tobacco use combined. In a way, monocropping is killing us all over the world. The article she cites is Food from the Anthropocene, the Eat Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets from Sustainable Food Systems. And it's clear Blair only read this little intro, what she screenshot in the video, because while the paper does encourage more diversity, it's diversity of crops, of plants, not meat. They specifically call out meat when talking about monocropping. Production should focus on a diverse range of nutritious foods from biodiversity enhancing food production systems rather than increased volume of a few crops, most of which are used for animal production. You can see here on their healthy plate, this is from their summary report, that whole grains and plant oils, monocrops, make up a large portion of the calories, much larger than animal products, which are optional. The whole paper completely and soundly refutes Illuminati's video. It's so weird that she would cite it at all. The only reason she would, two reasons, I guess, either she didn't read it, she just read that little intro, or she read it and assumes that no one in her audience will read it. So like, whatever, just screenshot it. No one will know. Given her approach to content creation, I'm guessing it's the former. She just didn't read it. Remember how I said you can use chemical fertilizers to help the soil get its nutrients back? Well, those chemicals, Turns out, shocking, aren't really that great for the environment. The runoff pollutes waterways, damages ecosystems, and more and more pesticides and fungicides are needed to maintain the land. Local environmental problems like species loss don't really have a whole lot to do with climate change, right? Like pandas dying off, not gonna cause heat waves that kill people. You know what will? Yeah, and it's a major driver of species extinction too. One study published on Elementa states, quote, Methane emissions, a potent greenhouse gas from fertilizer manufacturing, are an estimated 3.5 times higher than the US EPA's estimate of methane emissions for all industrial processes in the United States. 
In other words, don't go blaming cow farts for all the methane as there's a lot more to it than just that. The issue is always what's the alternative. When it comes to cows, the answer is easy. We have plenty of plant alternatives that are not only healthier for us, but produce less methane. We literally do not have to farm cows at all. With chemical fertilizers, we have essentially the opposite. It's so much more complicated because we need them for plant foods. We need them to improve yield. Doing away with chemical fertilizers entirely is not an option. Funnily enough, the Eat Lancet paper talks about this. They talk about over-application of fertilizer and also under-application. That influences yield. It reduces yield. So they don't want to get rid of chemical fertilizers entirely. Again, not even an option. They want to rebalance their usage. Part of their sustainability plan is to apply more where it's under-applied, again, to improve yield, and apply less where it's over-applied. Point is, it's complicated. Illuminati has no idea what she's talking about. By no means is it only vegans that use monocropping, so why would I talk about this in an episode about veganism? Well, it sure seems like the obvious solution here is to try and scale back the monocropping, even if it isn't a simple one. However, veganism mostly relies on this practice to farm staples needed in their diet, such as soy and wheat. The Eat Lancet report scales back on monocropping just a little bit, and mostly by reducing animal agriculture. They recognize the whole grains monocropping produces are healthy and essential to feeding 8 billion people, whether those people are vegan or not. She goes on to recite a bunch of stuff we've heard before, that cows are good for the land, actually, they eat a bunch of garbage. Cattle is an effective part of using land. Some of the areas they graze on just can't really be used as farmland, whether it's because of rocky terrain or soil. Plus, cows don't just eat wheat or corn either. They can eat things that humans can't and which would be considered waste. In a few cases, cows are reared in the way Blair describes, as mentioned in the paper she cites. Some populations worldwide depend on agropastoral livelihoods and animal protein from livestock. In addition, many populations continue to face significant burdens of undernutrition and obtaining adequate quantities of micronutrients from plant source foods alone can be difficult. Given these considerations, the role of animal source foods in people's diets must be carefully considered in each context and within local and regional realities. Yet they still recommend a greater than 50% reduction in red meat. Because most people don't deal with this. Most of us do not need animal products. In the grand scheme of things, and for people in developing countries, cows are not efficient uses of land. Countless studies have gone into the harms of the intensive animal agriculture needed to sustain people on large quantities of meat. This really isn't up for debate. People who know so much more about all of these issues have already examined the food systems and emissions and come to the undeniable conclusion that an almost entirely plant-based diet is the only way forward. But of course, Blair doesn't cite any of these experts. Instead, she turns to how to cook that. Anne Reardon actually discusses this during one of her videos about which milk you should drink. And in it, she talks about everything from environmental factors to the treatment of the cows. And while everyone has to do what's best for them, it doesn't seem like any single one answer is perfect and flawless. Anne Reardon is not an expert in environmental science, and this video that Blair references is pretty bad. Anne says that we can't really say which milk is better for the environment. There are just too many factors when we, yeah, yeah, no, we, we can. Plant milks are better than cow's milk. She also has a really crazy video debunking flax. I have responses to both of these videos for those who are interested. Yeah, I mean, her cooking stuff and her debunking hacks stuff, that's what I used to watch. I used to really like her channel. That stuff seems fine, but I would take anything she has to say about nutrition or environmental science with a cup of salt. If you don't want to eat a locally caught fish, that's okay. But you can't tell me that the emissions from shipping monocropped avocados is healthier for the earth by comparison. Actually, I can, because most of a food's carbon footprint does not come from transporting it. For avocados specifically, and even when shipping from Mexico to the UK, it's about 8% of their total footprint. Even when shipped at great distances, its emissions are much less than locally produced animal products. And the meat industry has plenty of issues too. I am not making any excuses for them. I've even already made an episode just about Tyson alone recently. Everything in capitalism sucks. And so even when you try and do something good, chances are there's a company out there that's just gonna ruin it for you through bad business practices and you may not know it until you decide to follow the chain. And unfortunately, that happens in veganism too. Everything sucks, so don't try to be better. 
Really? Is that the message of this video? It's just... It's so cynical. It's so wrong. There's always nuance, of course, no matter the topic. But when it comes to diet, the answer is pretty clear. A typical plant-based diet is better, environmentally speaking, and in other ways as well, than a typical omnivorous diet, even an organic, locally produced one. Talking about companies specifically and the companies are bad. It's just, it's so weird. Sending a very confused message to people and ultimately a, well, there's nothing you can do about it sort of message because no matter what company you buy from, Tyson or Tofurky, they're all bad, which is just so silly. It's not the companies, it's the products themselves. If you want to lower your carbon footprint, eating less animal products is a pretty surefire way to do that. Now, of course, there's a lot of nuance here. I don't think any source that I've seen has given me every single pro and con related to monocropping without any bias whatsoever. Which is maybe proof that she didn't read the Eat Lancet report because that is exactly what she's talking about. It's as unbiased as you get. For one thing, it's very pro-plants while also being very pro-fish. Again, animal products are optional, but Walter Willett et al obviously believe that certain fish are very healthy and can play a role in a climate-friendly diet. It's not at all a vegan message. Maybe her issue is that the report doesn't focus on monocropping. I mean, yeah, of course it doesn't. Monocropping is like not even close to the biggest issue when we're talking about climate change or even diets and climate change. I think she wants it to be because monocropping, grains and soy, what do vegans eat? grains and soy. Vegan's bad. Some of the substitutions for animal products are far from sustainable or cruelty-free. And I don't just mean the meat either. It's really weird she chose to show Beyond, considering they commission life cycle assessments of their beef. And yeah, it's way more environmentally friendly than cow's beef. If that's too corporate for you, well, here's an independent study that comes to the same conclusion. Plant-based meats are many times better than beef and less better, but still better than chicken, pork, dairy, and eggs. I don't just mean the meat either, but other objects like pleather, plastic leather, whatever the hell you wanna call it, it, it is cheaper and arguably more ethical because it's not made from animals, but it's not faultless by any means. And while you personally might feel that wearing pleather is better than an animal, animals themselves can be harmed either way. First, how often do we buy and throw away clothes? How often do we eat? There's a huge difference between those two things. There's an obvious reason why there's just not that much research comparing clothing and environmental impact. It matters far less than what's on our plates. There is some research though, even on pleather, and it took like 30 seconds to find this. 17 kilograms CO2 equivalent per square meter for leather, 15.8 for pleather. And as Circumfauna points out, the numbers should probably be a little bit higher for leather, considering this report included incineration for faux leather, but not for leather. It's illogical to include incineration for synthetics, but not for animal leather. And while faux leather won't effectively biodegrade, neither will animal derive leather to the point of total decomposition, even in controlled climate study conditions shared by leather tannery groups. Now, emissions from incineration or decomposition, probably pretty small. A square meter of material is around a kilogram, so maybe a couple more kilograms of emissions. There's also this much higher figure that includes cattle farm, the leather panel argues these emissions belong to the meat and milk industries. I think this is quasi-reasonable. Raw leather can be considered a byproduct if we assume the cows will be killed for beef either way. While leather does pad the profits of animal agriculture, thus reducing the price of beef and increasing demand at that price, it's not clear how much it actually does so. So the real impact of leather is somewhere above this 17 kilograms, not really sure where. So I think just to be safe, extremely conservative, vegans should stick to the 17 kilograms figure. Regardless, and according to uh, not vegans, it's clear that artificial leather is better than cow skin. Blair brings up cotton and wool and gives PETA shit for promoting organic cotton because cotton bad too. It's weird she doesn't mention the environmental impact of cotton like she does for leather. Instead, she focuses on child labor. <laughs> this video is all over the place. It's so weird. Anyway, sheep are major methane producers and wool is not a byproduct. The best case for wool production is several times worse for global climate change than the worst case 
for cotton, the only advantage wool has is on local water use, which is not really on the same level as climate change. Blair does recommend hemp and then goes on this like the world sucks tangent. Let's be real, no one, at least in the US, really, you know, if you're a minimum wage worker, you can't really afford to live anymore in this country, period. It's absolutely insane. You have to have multiple jobs, multiple roommates. So yeah, when it comes to clothing choices, are you gonna go, oh yeah, $90 for a flannel or $12 for a flannel on a fast fashion website? I get it, it sucks. Maybe it doesn't make you feel good, but unfortunately that's our reality. Life really does suck right now. Again, it is such a weird video, particularly this section. Unless you are buying new clothes every day, what you wear just is not that impactful. It's why almost always when we're talking about the environmental benefits of veganism, we're talking about diet. And this is where Illuminati stops talking about environment again and starts talking about how mean vegans are. Many vegans are vegan in the first place because they want to help humanity and work on saving this big blue rock that we're floating on. But there's no denying that any movement has extremists and the ones in the vegan community are actually really harming their cause and not helping it like they think. Extremists don't help veganism. Sure, I've made that argument many times, but what does this have to do with how going vegan won't save us from climate catastrophe. She spends eight minutes on this, and the only like relevant part is where she warns that being so mean and so aggressive hurts the cause. If you speak down to others and act self-righteous to advocate for compassion, I think you're doing it wrong. Essentially, if in order for you to feel like you're moving up, you have to drag somebody down, I don't think you're doing it right. But she doesn't believe in the cause. She doesn't believe in veganism environmentally or otherwise, it seems. So why is she offering advice? It's so weird. What is this video? I don't want to just accuse someone of padding a runtime, although again, you know, it would be, I think, a, a fair assumption here probably. Eight minutes on the vegan teacher's mean. Like, what the fuck? Back to the environment and oh my God. New research has suggested that humanely raised meat is actually the most ethical way to eat if we want to save the planet. This article is referencing a study. Why am I not shocked that she shows the article instead of the study itself? Whatever, it's not always a problem. In this case, oh my God. So it's called the Vegan Industrial Complex, the Political Ecology of Not Eating Animals. It's published in the Journal of Political Ecology by a geography professor, which maybe isn't fair. You really don't have to have a relevant degree to do math, but it might help because there is not one iota of hard science in this. It's not even about climate change. It's about food sovereignty and anti-capitalism. And when she does try to do a little bit of math, it's just everything goes to shit. The ecological devastation wrought by monocultures cannot be overstated, and soybeans are no exception. One pound of soybeans makes two 14-ounce cake of tempeh, 20% protein. One acre of land can produce 300 pounds of soybeans in a single long growing season. She doesn't say where she got this figure from, but 300 pounds per acre is absurdly low. Again, a quick Google search, we see here 50.9 bushels per acre. A bushel of soy is about 60 pounds. That's not 300 pounds per acre, 3,054 pounds per acre. The U.S. Soybean Export Council has a convenient conversion table if we want to look at protein specifically. One bushel of soybeans, 11.8 pounds of isolated soy protein. If we multiply that by the estimated haul of whole soybeans, again, 50.9 bushels, we get 600.62 pounds of protein isolate per acre. So not 300 pounds of soybeans at roughly 20% protein per acre, but 600 pounds of protein isolate at roughly 80% protein per acre. She's off by an order of magnitude. Who knows how? She doesn't share her math here. This is why high quality peer review is important, and it suggests the Journal of Political Ecology not really cutting the mustard. And this is the crux of her argument too. So yeah, the, the whole paper is wrong. By contrast, at low humane densities, one acre of forest can support three to four pigs, 600 pounds, 272 kilograms of meat at 27% protein. If one is simply eating the soybeans, it seems to make a lot more sense to grow soybeans than to raise a pig, especially if they're being fed soy-based foods. 
But soybeans are not profitable without machinery or at smaller scales unless people are growing them in small plots with unpaid human, usually women's, labor, like some farms in India. So pigs and soybeans are roughly equivalent in terms of protein production per acre, but pigs are more efficient if they are eating things other than soybeans. Again, her soy math is ridiculous, so none of this adds up, but even if it did, throwing pigs in a forest is not a solution. First, feral pigs are an invasive species. They are a major cause of habitat destruction and species extinction. You don't get ecology points by unleashing more of these animals upon a forest ecosystem. Second, eating things other than soybeans. I mean, pigs can be partially fed on human feces and substantially fed on rotten food. Pretty sustainable, if you don't care about pig or human health. Immunologically, pigs are very similar to humans. There's no shortage of articles on zoonotic illness and risk from pigs. We really should be looking to limit contact with pigs as much as possible. So like, not this. If someone really wants to safely keep pigs as pets or as food, they need to be kept clean, they need to be provided clean food, and they need to be provided veterinary care and vaccinations. Kind of defeats the point of her supposedly low effort and sustainable protein source. This whole thing is just embarrassing, and while Illuminati is basically begging us to see her as some impartial investigator, it's clear she is not. Anyone ignoring the bulk of the evidence on the environment and our food choices in favor of this is not impartial. She finishes by rattling off a bunch of opinion pieces promoting regenerative agriculture. I've talked about the evidence on regenerative ag before, and this video is long enough, so I won't go into detail here. But for those interested, this report by the Food Climate Research Network of Oxford University is a good read. I didn't want to make this video, <laughs> said every YouTuber ever at some point. Um, yeah, partner was like, you, ha you have to watch it. You have to make a video. It's so bad. You know, it's low hanging fruit, kicking a person while they're down. You know, I don't know. It felt kind of weird. But then watching the video, Lord, the PETA one too. The plagiarizing is just so much less concerning to me than something like this, particularly, you know, what a uh, bomber guy focuses on in the video is her plagiarizing a pro-vaccine documentary, essentially an anti-Andrew Wakefield documentary. And she makes a highly plagiarized video that is essentially promoting vaccines. Like it's, you know, it's bad, but it's good, right? So yeah, th this is just so much more concerning to me. Climate change is inarguably one of the most important issues right now. And anyone who is confusing that conversation with garbage like this, it's fuck. Like if you're going to parrot, if you're going to plagiarize, please stick to consensus, stick to the experts, not geography professors and blog posts. Just a thought. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this. Please like the video if you did and subscribe. Happy New Year. Of course, this is my first video of the new year. Finally feeling well enough to record, so that's nice. Thank you so much to my members here on YouTube and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post exclusive videos for tier two members, two videos a month. One is a vlog and the other is a controversial topic that's unrelated to veganism or like slightly related, something I don't really want to post to the channel. Actually, my last one for December is on the Bomber Guy plagiarism video. I also have a TikTok account now, which is very funny. I don't, like, it's kind of embarrassing why, or I guess not. I saw a Hank Green video where he talked about the money he makes or whatever. I don't know. It was all weird, like TikTok pays you more if you have a longer video, but that's it, too long for like YouTube shorts. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But I was like, oh, Hank Green has a TikTok account. I guess I should get TikTok. <laughs> Embarrassing, but also if all of your like life decisions are made based on what Hank Green says, not so bad. Not the worst person to emulate. I tried going through because I don't use TikTok either, but now I have an account and I'm seeing all these videos and they're all just like, not relevant to me at all. It's like younger people doing things. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the song is. I don't know what the context is for half of this stuff. And it's just, it's very overwhelming. But people have told me you just need to go through 
and it took me took me too long to figure this out. If you hold down on it, it'll show you the not interested. I wish that were just like out there on the little sidebar where I can just click it, but you have to hold down on the video and then click not interested. And I guess swiping away does something too, right? Tells the algorithm that, hey, you don't really like this. I don't know. I've done that probably 50 times and I'm still getting the same kid content. I don't know, like 20 year old people content. And I just don't, I don't understand. I do see a lot of like really pretty girls just being beautiful. And it's, I don't know. It's nice. Like, oh my God, she's so gorgeous. Oh, she changed her hair and she's even more gorgeous. I love it. But really, I, I should not even do this. Like, I don't need to get back on social media. I'm rarely ever on Twitter. I'm rarely ever on Instagram or anything. I really don't need to start using TikTok, probably. I've never hurt myself coughing. Like I know that's a thing, but I've never done it until now. There's a first for everything. And man, this last cold, I mean, I still sound funny. It's just ridiculous. I'm like getting better so slowly, but, uh, yeah, I, um, well, I hurt down here first, like my, my tummy, I pulled something and that sucked. That went away pretty quick. Then I pulled something here, right under my boob, intercostal muscle, I think it's called in between the ribs, this side, and then this side, and this one, oh, it just kills, and it was getting better, and then I coughed one time in the shower, like, yes, I think yesterday morning, and it, like, popped? I, what does that mean? I don't know. But yeah, it's bad again. Not, like, the worst it's been, like, several days ago, it, oh my god, it was so painful, but, um, yeah, it hurts. It hurts to cough. It hurts to move pretty much anywhere. Like, you don't think how much you use these muscles, right? It's like low back. I've had low back pain for so long. You realize, wow, you, you use your back pretty much any sort of movement. Same thing here, man. So much of what we do uses these muscles and yeah, sucks.